Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you've not been here before, my name is Emily and head over to my channel to see um, more videos of me, a little bit of an introduction and a little bit more fun challenges over there. Um, as well as my most recent one where I tried under 100 calorie snacks um, because my Instagram is way more fitnessy, it's got workouts over there and stuff like that so I was sort of tying in my YouTube channel with a bit of that. Now I firstly need to apologise for the lighting, my ring light broke literally tonight, it's like the third time I've used it, don't worry I've emailed Amazon, hopefully that'll sort it out. Um, so welcome to my channel, tonight's video is the first in a, what I'm going to start as a series um, called Pillow Talk. So I'm literally going to talk about um, a few subjects and it's going to get quite deep, um, probably a little bit emotional, um, but I this topic in particular that I'm just going to be discussing tonight is body confidence, motivation, um, sort of feeling down and how you can sort of work your way towards self-love and um, feeling beautiful. Um, so without further ado, I'll get started. Now I am whispering because I've literally, to get into the concept of pillow talk, I'm literally doing this before I go to bed. Um, so the boys are asleep so I don't want to wake them up so I am trying to be a little bit more quiet um, but yeah so let's get straight into it so to give you a little bit more background about me and my confidence and my confidence issues um, when I was at school I was very much I wouldn't say bullied like bullied is a very strong word um, but I was the centre of jokes. I think I'll call it that instead of bullied because it definitely wasn't bullied. I know that there are people out there that are actually bullied and I really wasn't. Um, so I'll call it the centre of jokes and I fully sort of encouraged it almost. I like laughed along with them. I was like, ha, that's so funny to them. And I, to be fair, I still do it today, where I never let people realise when they've hurt me. Like, dating will probably be a completely different pillow talk, because that requires a long chat. But, like, if a guy upsets me, or says something that upsets me, I never let people realise quite how much they've hurt me. And I think it stems from school. Um, so I was chubby, I was always like the, the larger one. I had glasses, I had braces, I mean, it, I was pretty ripe for picking on, to be fair. Um, and I was a bit of a nerd, and I liked learning, and I liked getting homework and stuff like that, so I think I just didn't fit in, and I went to private school, and I'm an army baby, so my dad's in the army, so... I was very different, I had a very different upbringing, my parents really struggled to send me to private school and everyone that I was around didn't really have the same struggles, like obviously there were people in the same scenario but a lot of them didn't have the same struggles so hadn't really been through life the same way as I had so I struggled on that sense. And then when I went to uni, again I was still like the larger person, I was, I've never been massively skinny. I mean, that's another, um, well now I'll probably talk about it. Um, so whilst I was at school, I did have um, an eating disorder. I had anorexia for two years um, and was really, really poorly. Um, and that obviously all came from a lack of body confidence. I sort of started working out and started getting a little bit slimmer and then was like, oh my gosh, you know, I can be like everyone else, I can be the skinny girls like everyone else. Um, so I just carried on and it just got too far. Um, and then on the back of recovering from that, I had a hormone disorder which meant that um, no matter what I ate, I still put on weight. So I went from being severely anorexic to a size 14 slash 16 
which obviously is one extreme to the other. It was like major, I like, lacked so much confidence. I was again surrounded by these hockey player, tennis player, skinny, or I don't like using the word skinny, but slim girls that were beautiful. And I just wasn't, I just hadn't found my confidence. Um, and then I start, started uni and I found BBG, for anyone that doesn't know that, it's the Bikini Body Guide by um, Kayla, I think it's Itzines, Itzines, I don't really know. Um, and it's basically all HIIT workouts and a lot of people get really, really lean and really, really muscly and it's great. It's really a great thing to start with um, and it gave me such a massive amount of confidence. And like I started really, really loving the way I looked and the way that the gym made me look. Um, and the slim and the lean and the muscly look, I, it gave me a massive amount of confidence. Um, and then I met a guy at uni who I thought was like the most beautiful guy ever. And I was like, oh my God, he's never going to fancy me. He's never going to like me. And he did. And he found me attractive. And I was like, oh my gosh, like he's the fittest guy at uni, like blah, blah, blah. And that gave me a massive amount of confidence, but he wasn't very nice and he was really quite horrible. And at the same time as giving me this massive amount of confidence, he just broke me down. Um, and it, I became sort of, I don't know. I, I needed to get my confidence from him and I wasn't getting it from anywhere else. I wasn't getting it from the gym. I wasn't getting it from working out. I was getting it from him and I sort of relied on him for confidence um, and in him breaking it down I really really massively hit, hit rock bottom. I was a horrible friend, I was a horrible daughter, like sister, everything. He just, because he hit my confidence I hit out at everyone else and it was really horrible. Um, and the whole learning self-confidence and learning self-love is genuinely when I say you cannot rely on anyone else to give you confidence it's so important you you I mean it adds to it don't get me wrong like a guy saying you're beautiful or your boyfriend saying you're beautiful and having someone that loves you and stuff that helps having a boyfriend helped me massively but then at the same time it really didn't because he would again was horrible but he broke me down and I when that broke down and when he broke up with me I was left with such a massive lack of confidence because I had always relied on other people to give it to me and I sort of in learning to be by myself and being single I mean I don't get me wrong, I don't love it. I'd love not to be single, but I am really, really learning to love myself and learning to get my confidence from me. And it's such a daily struggle. It, it doesn't come overnight. You're not gonna wake up one day and go, oh my God, like blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't mean looking in the mirror and going, oh my God, I'm so fit. Like that's not confidence. Confidence is having the ability to be vulnerable and confidence is the having the ability to do something that you never thought you would do. Confidence is so much more than thinking you're beautiful and everyone should think that they're beautiful but it it's so much more than that um, and self-love especially. Self-love is a bit more like I am going to love myself and my imperfections and I'm going to think I'm beautiful regardless I think it's really hard obviously with this with like the whole social media and we're given these idealistic bodies that we think oh my god I need this I need that and actually where does it stop because you could have that body that you've always strived for and just want more it never ends you want more and like I've 
I'm slowly learning. I haven't learnt it completely, but I'm slowly learning that it's okay. And this comes in self-love and confidence and, and everything, but it's okay for me not to go to the gym that one day a week because you want to go meet a friend for dinner and you want to eat pasta and you want to eat garlic bread because you have the confidence and you have the self-love to know that if you go out one week or you have a, a bit of a holiday from the gym and you get, yeah, okay, a little bit like, I, I don't even want to call it like chubby because you're not, is water retention. That's what it is. So you retain a little bit more water. It's looking at yourself and still loving yourself and going, do you know what that, that little bit that I don't like, that little bit was a whole night of laughter with my friends. And that's how I look at it. I look at my imperfections and I go, well that was two nights out last week with my best friends. Or that was a drink with that guy I really like. And it, it's those things, you start associating your imperfections with the love that you get or the happiness that you get from the reasons and I'm not saying drop everything don't strive towards your goals don't go to the gym because Emily said that I should love my water retention or I do because that's all I want to call it I don't want to call it like chubbiness Emily said I should love it because it means that I go out with my friends I'm not saying that by any means. You still need to strive towards your goals, but you need to find the balance that works for you and the balance that still gives you that happiness because at the end of the day, if you're going to go out every single week and eat what you want and blah, 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 you're not going to get to the goals that make you happy, that make you get gain the confidence and make you love yourself. Like, I, I have no doubt that if I stopped going to the gym, I'd really, really struggle to love myself and that's it. I go to the gym because I know that it makes me look or is making me look the way that I want to and the way that makes me happy and I know that will always be a moving goal but it's the moving goal that I'm happy with, it's the one that I found balance with and and that's really important. So I'll talk a little bit about like motivation as well because no one loves the gym. They may say or act like they love the gym, but no one loves the gym. Everyone has those moments where they're like, oh my God, I just want to lie in bed with my packet of crisps and my bag of sweets or chocolate and I want to watch Netflix. Guaranteed 99% of the population. But it's that, okay, do you know what, I'll get up. I'll try to go to the gym, I'll go to the gym for an hour and then I'll come back and then I'll lie in bed and eat chocolate if you want to but after the gym I don't really want to eat chocolate. It's all about that, like set your goals. If your goals involve chocolate because you're going to allow yourself that then that's fab. These people that, you know, are, are well, competitors and they they have such strict meal plans and stuff like that, that's okay. If that's what makes them happy and they're still getting their balance and they still have confidence, and they still love their body, that's fine. I'm not by any means going, that's, that's not a way to live your life. But then if your goals are to lose a bit of weight and stuff like that, then potentially don't come back and eat a bag of chocolate because that's not making you happy, that's not giving you the confidence and that's not, give, that's not, you know, working your way to self-love. Self-love is, to me, knowing that I'm sat here today knowing that I put 110% effort into my gym workouts, into making my gym workouts, into actually going and then I allow myself to sit down or lie in bed and eat what I want on those occasional times because I would rather have the confidence and I know that I get self-love that way. And like self-love is different 
to every single person. Every single person has such a beautiful body in their own way. And it's so important to understand that. If you want to be a size 8 or a size 6 or whatever, or you're naturally a size 6, like, people, what people forget is that people that are super, super slim often have more, if not the same, insecurities about someone that is larger and doesn't want to be larger. People that are super slim don't necessarily always want to be super slim they really struggle to put on weight and people that are slightly larger struggle to lose weight and it's it's so different to everybody that it needs to be a really personal journey and it you really need to sort of try and work it through your own head because that's that you're you're the only person that can give yourself self-confidence and self-love because getting it from other people is not good because at the end of the day if those people go for whatever reason you're left with no confidence and you need to be able to have confidence in yourself for other people to see that and love that and I'm not saying if you don't have any confidence then people can't love you but I feel like it's a really tricky subject like talking about it because I'm I'm always gonna get people that are like well hang on Emily like you're saying this like and the other like I really don't mean it in a horrible way and it's quite a hard subject to articulate of course it is because you're talking about something so personal and such a massive thing for so many people self-confidence and self-love and motivation is so hard and motivation for the gym especially, like, all I'd say is every single time I've gone when I didn't want to, I've never regretted it. Every single time I've not gone and I needed to or wanted to, I've regretted it. Because I always get there and ten minutes in I'm like, why did I not want to go? Because I, I, I do sort of enjoy the pain of working out. It's painful and it's horrible, but I know that afterwards I'm going to enjoy it so much more because it gets me the results that I want, that make me happy. I'd also say on the confidence side, no one should make you feel inferior or make you feel like you're not beautiful or point out your imperfections. And I'm going to talk on like a really personal level with my ex. He, without me sort of realising, would point out imperfections that have really or were really drilled into me. And I was made to be really conscious of them. So like probably way too much information. But close to my time of the month, my lower belly really sticks out. And it sort of becomes quite hard and it's water retention and it's horrible because I know that it's going to go literally the day I start my period it goes disappears overnight it's bizarre and I'd be like just cuddling my ex and like either sat on him in bed not like that but as in like just like sat on his lap or something and he'd literally like hold it and be like oh I can tell you're coming on or something like that and it's like he made me feel really conscious about it and when you're conscious about something already and someone who is meant to love you for you is pointing that out as well that's horrible especially when it's a hormonal thing as well because you literally can't do anything about it and you're made to feel inferior and you're made to feel un unbeautiful and this is what I mean by like if if you have self-confidence you have self-love in yourself and someone else says that to you you're gonna have the ability and the strength to turn around and go no sorry I don't know what you're talking about because you've got that confidence and you've got that loving yourself to go to turn around to that person and go no sorry I don't know what you're talking about I love that bit of me or I love that and blah blah blah, blah. no one should be telling you that you look a certain way or you should look a certain way because whatever gives you confidence if it's having pink hair or it's having 
I don't know, your ear pierced or your nose pierced or dark eyeshadow or bright eyeshadow or whatever, you know what I mean, like fashion sense wise or anything. As long as you feel like you're rocking it and you feel like a million dollars and you're not doing it for anyone else, rock that look. Rock it. Have the confidence. Because if, imagine if every single girl had that. Like I'm smiling because it's just like I want to... I want everyone to feel how I sometimes feel and I, I'm not by any, I'm literally talking about like the 5% of the time where I actually look in the mirror and I go, mmm, girl, like, it's 5% of the time but that 5% of the time I feel like a million dollars and I, I just hope that everyone else can have that 5% of the time or more because you could do anything and you could literally do whatever you want in life if you take that 5% and you just go with it because no one's stopping you then no one's getting in your way because your confidence comes from you and it comes from no one else if you take nothing away from what I've said but you take that your confidence and your self love needs to come from you just take that just work on it yourself Go and sit in a room and write down all the things you love about yourself. And also write down all the things you don't like about yourself. But also, once you've written those things down that you don't like about yourself, one, can they be changed by goals, whether that's in the gym or nutrition or self, sort of self-help books or education or, you know, like a hobby? Can they be changed? If they can't be changed, then why don't you love them? If it's something about your appearance, it's, if it's you're really self-conscious about your nose, I'm really self-conscious about my side profile and my chins and, you know, I, I am fully aware that I'm not the most beautiful girl in the world, but someone will find me beautiful and that's all I need. But if it's something that you can't change, you have to really like try and work through in your head just loving it anyway like you're so lucky to be in a position that you are to be alive you know I know that it's this sounds really like airy fairy and all of that but like you are you're really lucky and like that one person that finds you really beautiful is not looking at your nose not looking at your boobs either, I don't mean that. He, they're looking at your soul, at your personality, at, you know, the reasons why you make them laugh and the things that make you you. Your nose doesn't make you you. Your face doesn't make you you. I mean, it does, but the thing that makes you you and the reason why people love you is not your looks, it's you. Your looks might just help. I mean, all those genetically blessed people out there, congratulations. Okay guys, that's it from me, but I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. There will be many more of these pillow talks. I've literally got my pillow here. You can't see it. I've literally got like six pillows though. I um, love every single one of them. Um, but I really hope you've enjoyed it and get to see a little bit more about me. I know I didn't go very deep in this one or emotional or whatever. Um, but this is my first one and I just kind of want to put a feeler out there as to whether you guys like it or not. Um, but this will be the first in a series of pillow talks. Um, very natural, very deep very open um I don't want to sort of edit it out for YouTube I literally want it to be quite raw I'm literally I mean I'm literally in my pajamas in my friend's jumper looking like this because I'm literally about to go to bed I mean I'll take my makeup off 
and then I'm literally going to go to bed. And I'm really sorry about the lighting as well. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more of these or you have an idea for a pillow talk or you want to know more about something, um, guide chat, I don't know, eating, I can do more about motivation. I know I haven't really delved much into motivation. Um, what else? All the deep stuff. Exes, dating, I'll probably do one on dating. Um, because I feel like there's not a lot of YouTube videos out there on like what dating is actually like right now because it's not great. Anyway, there's going to be loads. Stay tuned, subscribe, give it a thumbs up and head over to either Instagram or my channel to see more of me because I'm great. <laughs> Bye guys.
okay guys that's it from me but i really hope you've enjoyed this video if you have enjoyed it then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel there will be many more of these pillow talks i've literally got my pillow here you can't see it i've literally got like six pillows though i um, love every single one of them um, but I really hope you've enjoyed it and get to see a little bit more about me. I know I didn't go very deep in this one or emotional or whatever. Um, but this is my first one and I just kind of want to put a feeler out there as to whether you guys like it or not. Um, but this will be the first in a series of pillow talks. Um, very natural, very deep, very open. Um, I don't want to sort of edit it out for YouTube I literally wanted to be quite raw I'm literally I mean I'm literally in my pajamas in my friend's jumper looking like this because I'm literally about to go to bed I mean I'll take my makeup off and then I'm literally gonna go to bed and I'm really sorry about the lighting as well um but yeah if you want to see more of these or you have an idea for a pillow talk or you want to know more about something um guide chat i don't know eating i can do more about motivation i know i haven't really delved much into motivation um what else all the deep stuff exes dating i'll probably do one on dating um because i feel like there's not a lot of youtube videos out there on like what dating is actually like right now because it's not great but anyway there's gonna be loads stay tuned subscribe give it a thumbs up and head over to either instagram or my channel to see more of me because i'm great <laughs> bye guys